हेलो एवरीवन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू रीड अवर चैप्टर फोर कंबशन एंड फ्लेम वी यूज डिफरेंट काइंड्स ऑफ फ्यूल फॉर वेरियस पर्पसेस एट होम इन इंडस्ट्री एंड फॉर रनिंग ऑटोमोबाइल्स कैन यू नेम अ फ्यू फ्यूल्स यूज्ड इन आवर होम्स नेम अ फ्यू फ्यूल्स यूज्ड इन ट्रेड एंड इंडस्ट्री वॉट फ्यूल्स आर यूज फॉर रनिंग ऑटोमोबाइल्स Your list will contain fuels like cow dung wood, coal, charcoal, petrol, diesel, compressed natural gas, etc. You are familiar with the burning of a candle. What is the difference between the burning of a candle and the burning of a fuel like coal? Maybe you were able to guess right. Candle burns with a flame whereas coal does not. Similarly you will find many other materials burning without a flame let us study the chemical process of burning and the types of flame produced during this process what is combustion recall the activity of burning of magnesium ribbon performed in class 7 we learned that magnesium burns to form magnesium oxide and produces heat and light we can perform a similar activity with a piece of charcoal hold the piece with a pair of tongs and bring it near the flame of a candle or a bunsen burner what do you observe we find that charcoal burns in air we know that coal too burns in air producing carbon dioxide heat and light a chemical process in which a substance is substance reacts with oxygen to give off heat is called combustion the substance that undergoes combustion is said to be combustible it is also called a fuel the fuel may be solid liquid or gas sometimes light is also given off during combustion either as a flame or as a glow In the reactions mentioned above magnesium and charcoal are combustible substances we were told that food is a fuel for our body rightly so in our body food is broken down by reaction with oxygen and heat is produced we learned that in class 7 activity 4.1 Collect some materials like straw, matchsticks, kerosene oil, paper, iron nails, stone pieces, glass, etc. Under the supervision of your teacher, try to burn each of these materials one by one. If combustion takes place, mark the material combustible; otherwise, mark it non-combustible. Can you name some more substances which are combustible? you can add those to table 4.1 let us investigate conditions under which combustion take place activity 4.2 caution be careful while handling burning candle fix a lighted candle on a table put a glass chimney over the candle and rest it on a few wooden blocks in such a way that air can enter the chimney observe what happens to the flame now remove the blocks and let the chimney rest on the table again observe the flame finally put a glass plate over the chimney watch the flame again what happens in these three cases does the flame flicker off does it flicker and give smoke does it burn unaffected Can you infer anything at all about the role played by air in the process of burning? We find that for combustion air is necessary. The candle burns freely in case A when air can enter the chimney from below. In case B when air does not enter the chimney from below the flame flickers and produces smoke. In case C the flame finally goes off because the air is not available. We have read that the sun produces its heat and light its own heat and light is it also some kind of combustion in the sun heat and light are produced by nuclear reactions you will learn about this process in higher classes activity 4.3 
प्लेस अ पीस ऑफ बर्निंग वुड और चारकोल ऑन एन आयरन प्लेट और तवा कवर इट विथ अ ग्लास जार और अ टम्बलर और अ ट्रांसपेरेंट प्लास्टिक जार ऑब्जर्व वॉट हैपन्स डज चारकोल स्टॉप बर्निंग आफ्टर सम टाइम कैन यू थिंक ऑफ द रीजन वाई इट स्टॉप बर्निंग यू माइट हैव हर्ड दैट वैन द क्लोथ्स ऑफ अ पर्सन कैच फायर द पर्सन इज कवर्ड विथ अ ब्लैंकेट टू एक्सटिंग्विश फायर कैन यू गेस वाई Now recall some of your experiences. Does a matchstick burn by itself? How does it burn? You must have had an experience of burning a piece of paper. Does it burn when a burning matchstick is brought near it? Can you burn a piece of wood by bringing a lighted matchstick near it? Why do you have to use paper or kerosene oil to start fire in wood or coal? Have you heard of forest fires? During extreme heat of summer at some places dry grass catches fire. From the grass it spreads to trees and very soon the whole forest is on fire. It is very difficult to control such fires. Do these experiences tell you that different substances catch fire at different temperatures? The lowest temperature at which a substance catches fire is called its ignition temperature. Can you tell now why a matchstick does not catch fire on its own at room temperature? Why does the matchstick start burning on rubbing it on the side of the matchbox? The history of the matchstick is very old. More than 5000 years ago small pieces of pine wood dipped in sulfur were used as matches in ancient Egypt the modern safety match was developed only about 200 years ago a mixture of an antimony trisulfide potassium chloride and white phosphorus with some glue and starch was applied on the head of a match made of suitable wood When stuck against a rough surface white phosphorus got ignited due to the heat of friction this started the combustion of the match however white phosphorus proved to be dangerous both for the workers involved in the manufacturing of matches and for the users These days the head of the safety match contains only antimony trisulfide and potassium chloride the rubbing surface was powder, powdered glass and a little red phosphorus which is much less dangerous when the match is struck against the rubbing surface some red phosphorus gets converted into white phosphorus This immediately reacts with potassium chloride in the matchstick head to produce enough heat to ignite antimony trisulfide and start the combustion. We find that the combustible substance cannot catch fire or burn as long as its temperature is lower than its ignition temperature. Have you ever seen cooking oil catching fire when a frying pan is kept for long on a burning stove? Kerosene oil and wood do not catch fire on their own at room temperature but if kerosene oil is heated a little it will catch fire but if wood is heated a little it would still not catch fire does it mean that ignition temperature of kerosene oil is lower than that of wood does it mean that we need to take special care in storing kerosene oil The following activity shows that it is essential for a substance to reach ignition temperature to burn. Activity 4.4 Caution Be careful while handling burning candle. Make two paper cups by folding a sheet of paper. Pour about 50 ml of water in one of the cups. Heat both the cups separately with a candle. What do you observe? What happens to the empty paper cup? What happens to the paper cup with water? Does water in this cup become hot? If we continue heating the cup, we can even boil water in the paper cup. 
Can you think of an explanation for this phenomenon? The heat supplied to the paper cup is transferred to water by conduction. So in the presence of water, the ignition temperature of paper is not reached. Hence, it does not burn. The substances which have very low ignition temperature and can easily catch fire with a flame are called inflammable substances. Examples of inflammable substances are petrol, alcohol, liquefied petroleum gas, etc. Can you list some more inflammable substances? How do we control fire? You must have seen or heard of fire breaking out in homes, shops and factories. If you have seen such an accident, write a short description in your notebook. Also share the experience with your classmates. Find out the telephone number of the fire service in your area. If a fire breaks out in your house or in your neighborhood, the fire first thing to do is to call the fire service. It is important that all of us know the telephone numbers of the fire service. Does your city town have a fire brigade station? When a fire brigade arrives, what does it do? It pours water on the fire. Water cools the combustible material so that its temperature is brought below its ignition temperature. This prevents the fire from spreading. Water vapors also surround the combustible material helping in cutting off the supply of air so the fire is extinguished. You have learned that there are three essential requirements for producing fire. Can you list these requirements? These are fuel, air to supply oxygen and heat to raise the temperature of the fuel beyond the ignition temperature. Fire can be controlled by removing one or more of these requirements. The job of a fire extinguisher is to cut off the supply of air or to bring down the temperature of the fuel or both. Notice that the fuel in most cases cannot be eliminated. If, for instance, a building catches fire, the whole building is the fuel. The most common fire extinguisher is water. But water works only when things like wood and paper are on fire. If electrical equipment is on fire, water may conduct electricity and harm those try trying to douse the fire. Water is also not suitable for fires involving oil and petrol. Do you recall that water is heavier than oil, so it sinks below the oil and oil keeps burning on the top. For fires involving electrical equipment and inflammable materials like petrol, carbon dioxide is the best extinguisher. Carbon dioxide being heavier than oxygen covers the fire like a blanket. Since the contact between the fuel and oxygen is cut off, the fire is controlled. The added advantage of carbon dioxide is that in most cases it does not harm the electrical equipment. How do we get the supply of carbon dioxide? It can be stored at high pressure as a liquid in cylinders. In what form is the LPG stored in the cylinders? When released from the cylinder, carbon dioxide expands enormously in volume and cools down. So it not only forms a blanket around the fire, it also brings down the temperature of the fuel. That is why it is an excellent fire extinguisher. Another way to get carbon dioxide is to release a lot of dry powder of chemicals like sodium bicarbonate, baking soda or potassium bicarbonate near the fire. These chemicals give off carbon dioxide. Types of combustion Bring a burning matchstick or a gas lighter near a gas stove in the kitchen. Turn on the knob of the gas stove. What do you observe? Caution! Do not handle the gas stove yourself. Ask your parents to help. 
we find that the gas burns rapidly and produces heat and light such combustion is known as rapid combustion there are substances like phosphorus which burn in air at room temperature the type of combustion in which a material suddenly bursts into flames without the application of any apparent cause is called spontaneous combustion spontaneous combustion of coal dust has resulted in many disastrous fires in coal mines spontaneous forest fires are sometimes due to the heat of the sun or due to lightning strike however most forest fires are due to the carelessness of human beings it is important to remember that the camp fires must be completely extinguished before leaving a forest after a picnic or a visit we generally have fireworks on festival days when a cracker is ignited a sudden reaction takes place with the evolution of heat light and sound a large amount of gas formed in the reaction is liberated such a reaction is called explosion explosion can also take place if pressure is applied on the cracker flame observe an lpg flame can you tell the color of the flame what is the color of a candle flame recall your experience of burning a magnesium ribbon in class 7 if you do not have experience of burning the remaining items in table 4.2 you can do that now table 4.2 materials forming flame on burning candle magnesium camphor kerosene stove charcoal record your observations and mention whether on burning the material forms a flame or not structure of a flame activity 4.5 light a candle caution be careful hold a 4 to 5 cm long thin glass tube with a pair of tongs and introduce its one end in the dark zone of a non flickering candle flame bring a lighted matchstick near the other end of the glass tube do you see a flame caught at this end of the glass tube after a while if so what is it that produces a flame notice that the wax near the heated wick melts quickly the substances which vaporize during burning gives flames for example kerosene oil and molten wax rise through the wick and are vaporized during burning and form flames charcoal on the other hand does not vaporize and so does not produce a flame in activity 4.5 could the vapors of wax coming out of the glass tube be the cause of the flame produced when the candle flame is steady introduce a clean glass plate slide into the luminous zone of the flame hold it there with a pair of tongs for about 10 seconds then remove it what do you observe a circular blackish ring is formed on the glass plate slide it indicates the deposition of unburned carbon particles present in the luminous zone of the flame hold a thin long paper wa- copper wire just inside the non luminous zone of flame for about 30 seconds notice that the portion of the copper wire just outside the flame gets red hot does it indicate that the non luminous zone of the flame has a high temperature in fact this part of the flame is the hottest part goldsmiths blow the outermost zone of a flame with a metallic blow pipe for melting gold and silver why do they use the outermost zone of the flame what is a fuel recall that the sources of heat energy for domestic and industrial purposes are mainly wood charcoal petrol kerosene etc these substances are called fuels a good fuel is one which is readily available it is cheap it burns easily in air at a moderate rate 
it produces a large amount of heat it does not leave behind any undesirable substances there is probably no fuel that could be considered as an ideal fuel we should look for a fuel which fulfills most of the requirements for a particular use fuels differ in their cost some fuels are cheaper than others make a list of fuels familiar to you group them as solid liquid and gaseous fuels as in table 4.3 fuel efficiency suppose you were asked to boil a given quantity of water using cow dung coal and lpg as fuel which fuel would you prefer give your reason you may take the help of your parents do these three fuel produce the same amount of heat the amount of heat energy produced on complete combustion of 1 kg of fuel is called its calorific value the calorific value of a fuel is expressed in a unit called kilojoule per kilogram calorific value of some fuels are given in table 4.4 cow dung cake 6000 to 8000 wood 17000 to 22000 coal 25000 to 33000 petrol 45000 kerosene 45000 diesel 45000 methane 50000 cng 50000 lpg 55000 biogas 35000 to 40000 hydrogen 150000 burning of fuels leads to harmful products the increasing fuel consumption has harmful effects on the environment carbon fuels like wood coal petroleum release unburnt carbon particles these fine particles are dangerous pollutants causing respiratory diseases such as asthma Incomplete combustion of these fuels gives carbon monoxide gas. It is a very poisonous gas. It is dangerous to burn coal in a closed room. The carbon monoxide gas produced can kill persons sleeping in that room. Oh, so that is why we are advised never to sleep in a room with burning or smoldering coal fire in it. combustion of most fuels releases carbon dioxide in the environment increased concentration of carbon dioxide in the air is believed to cause global warming global warming is the rise in temperature of the atmosphere of the earth this results among other things in the melting of polar glaciers which leads to a rise in the sea level causing floods in the coastal areas low lying coastal areas may even be permanently submerged under water burning of coal and diesel releases sulfur dioxide gas it is an extremely suffocating and corrosive gas moreover petrol engines gives give off gaseous oxides of nitrogen oxides of sulfur and nitrogen dissolve in rain water and form acids Such rain is called acid rain. It is very harmful for crops, buildings, and soil. For centuries, wood was used as domestic and industrial fuel, but now it has been replaced by coal and other fuels like LPG. In many rural parts of our country, people still use wood as a fuel because of its easy availability and low cost. However burning of wood gives a lot of smoke which is very harmful for human beings it causes respiratory problems also trees provide us with useful substances which are lost when wood is used as fuel moreover cutting of trees leads to deforestation which is quite harmful to the environment as you learnt in class 7 The use of diesel and petrol as fuels in automobiles is being replaced by CNG compressed natural gas because CNG produces the harmful products in very small amounts. CNG is a cleaner fuel. 
so this was the reading of our chapter 4 combustion and flame if you have any doubt or query you can ask me in the comment section below also you can find the links to the other chapters in the description box below thank you everyone